All drugs of dependence are associated with increased dopamine activity in the so-called reward pathway of the brain. This pathway that gives us pleasure and tells us what's good for our survival. The overstimulation of the reward system when we use drugs of abuse or develop an addiction sets in motion a reinforcing pattern that teaches us to repeat the behaviour. Over time, as drug use and addiction continues and develops, the brain adapts to the overwhelming surges in dopamine. And it adapts by producing less dopamine, by reducing the number and activity of the dopamine receptors, and by essentially turning down the volume on the dopamine system. Our brain strives for balance. In some respects, we can conceptualise it as constantly adapting and changing to function in a way that we can act and feel normal, a process called homeostasis. And when we talk about homeostasis occurring in the brain, we use the term neuroadaptation. When we consume a drug, we alter the functioning of our brain. We upset the balance. And as a result, our brain tries to adapt it tries to minimise the effect of the drug and get back to normal. If we use a drug frequently, then the brain will adapt to try and be in balance when the drug is present. But if we then stop taking the drug, our brain is no longer in balance and it can take a really long time for the brain to readapt. In psychopharmacology, we refer to these processes as drug tolerance, and physical drug dependence. Tolerance occurs with the repeated administration of almost all drugs of abuse. However, it doesn't develop to all of the drug effects at the same rate or to the same level. Interestingly, tolerance often develops to the more unpleasant effects of the drug faster. So if a drug, when you first start using it, like heroin for example, makes you feel nauseous and vomit, you'll find that you'll develop tolerance to that rather quickly. You can develop tolerance quickly to one effect, but slowly or not at all to another. For example, you may have developed tolerance to the nausea that occurs when you first use an opiate like heroin, but you'll never develop tolerance to the constipation or the pinpoint pupils that are also produced by heroin. If tolerance is developed to one drug, then tolerance will develop to all of the drugs in the same drug class. What I mean by this is, if you develop tolerance to heroin, you've also developed tolerance to the other opiates such as morphine, codeine and methadone. This is a phenomenon called cross-tolerance. And this phenomenon can be very useful for the medical treatment of physical dependence. Tolerance to a drug has important implications for understanding drug use and addictive behaviour. The most obvious is that the user will have to keep increasing the dose to get that same effect that they had the first time they used. For example, in the case of heroin, experienced users may need to inject heroin as many as four or five times a day, and they'll need to inject larger doses than they did originally, while a less experienced heroin user may only need to inject once or twice a day with relatively small doses to achieve that same effect. Once a high level of tolerance has developed and the individual needs to take more frequent and higher doses than initially, then it can be really difficult to come back down. Without tolerance, reducing the amount of drugs that are used and gradually stopping use altogether would be considerably easier and far more comfortable. Nevertheless, tolerance doesn't last forever and it will drop down during periods of abstinence periods when you're not using. So drug users will find that they need a smaller dose to avoid suffering an overdose.